the 2023 Mazda CX-50, courtesy of Jack Giambalvo Mazda in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because this is an all new model from Mazda for 2023. Not only that, every single trim level gets all wheel drive as well. There is no front wheel drive configuration that you typically find on the competition, so I do like that. And if you were curious, the CX-50 is slightly larger than the CX-5 with a more rugged or more aggressive styling. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So. Having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2023 CX-50. There are way too many to name, quite honestly. So I am simply just going to list them on the screen right now. So essentially it starts at $28,825. Top trim level then starts at $43,575. But so you can imagine with all of those trim levels, there are a couple different engine configurations for the 2023 CX-50. First one is going to belong to all the trim levels that don't say turbo in it. <laughs> that power plant is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, 187 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. 186 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,000 RPM. Power sent to all four wheels through a six-speed automatic. Red line comes in at 6,500 RPM with MPG numbers coming in at 24 in the city, 30 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. But then there is that other engine configuration belonging to all the trim levels with the turbo in the name. That one is the one we have today, and that one is powered by 2.5 liter turbocharged four-cylinder, 256 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, 320 pound-feet of torque coming in at 20. 500 rpm again sent to all four wheels through a six speed automatic red line coming in at 6300 rpm zero to 60 times 6.6 .6 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 23 in the city 29 on the highway taking either regular or premium unleaded fuel so there's numbers that i just gave you the horsepower and torque numbers that was for the premium fuel configuration however you can put regular unleaded fuel in this particular engine setup but it will give you a pretty substantial loss of power, approximately 25 horsepower. So just wanted to mention that. And so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the CX-50, I wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. There's a little drive mode toggle switch located just to the left of the shifter. Those drive modes will include sport, off-road, and normal, essentially adjusting things like the throttle response, the shift points, and actually there's an off-road mode that essentially helps prevent drive mode spinning in off-road driving situations. So I did want to mention that as well. So now, having got all of that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and change it to uh, sport driving mode, which actually changed the center speedometer to a red hue, which is pretty cool as well. And let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test at the same time. Let's see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react. And let's see how quickly we can get our turbocharged CX-50 here up to speed. All right, and so before we do this acceleration test, I did want to mention to you guys, there is a full manual shift mode. To put it in full manual shift mode, just slide the shifter all the way to the left, and it's actually going to tell you what gear you're in up on the digital portion of the gauges. But here we go. Three, two, one, go. Quick paddle shifters. All right. Yeah, that's definitely going to get the job done. I actually really like the paddle shifters. Typically, with six-speed automatics and uh, CVTs and things like that, you're not going to get that quick pack. Ugh, you're not going to get that quick of reacting paddle shifters. But in the CX-50, you actually do, which really surprised me. So I am a big fan of the paddle shifters. Acceleration was plenty fine, as I expected. This is a turbocharged engine, of course. So yeah, you're not going to have any issues merging onto the highway either, obviously. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.8-inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.8-inch solid rear discs. 60 to 0 stopping distance goes. That is going to come in at 118 feet, which is absolutely amazing. Braking feel is 100% on the firmer side of things as well, which I personally prefer. And that is kind of what you're looking for in the CX-50 anyways, because this is kind of like a more of a driver's SUV. And I can tell you that right off the bat because that's what Mazda is known for. And the steering feel is brilliant. We'll get to that in a second. But anyways, braking feel is on the firmer side of things, instantly brings you to a stop. There's no soft or dead spots in the braking. So, that's typically what you get in SUVs, actually, but you don't get it here in the CX-50, so I'm a big fan of that. Then touching on suspension and handling, up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, torsion beam, rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, 
it's fine. It's been perfectly fine. It's pretty much as you would expect the CX-50 to ride like. It's definitely absorbing Pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely, so I haven't had any issues there. As far as steering feel goes, like I said, that is the first thing I noticed when I got in the CX-50. It's 100% on the heavier side of things, so that is wonderful because it instantly points you in the direction that you want to go. Better driver feedback, and really, that is what Mazda is known for, and I absolutely love it because, like I said, it's more driver emotion. Typically, with SUVs, you're going to find loosey-goosey steering feels, but that is not the case here in the CX-50, and that's why people buy Mazdas, because the driver dynamics are just 100% on point. You got the turbocharged engine, you got the incredible braking, 60, 0, 118 feet, and the incredible steering feel as well. This is a driver's SUV. I can tell you guys that without a doubt, so I am loving it. As far as cabin noise goes, we got this roof rack up here, so there's a little bit of wind noise because of that, but if you didn't have this roof rack, that is 100% going to be completely eliminated and it should be a perfectly fine serene cabin so did want to mention that touching on visibility it's not going to be as good as the cx5 because of its shape but having said that it's still worth it the looks on this thing are a lot better than the cx5 in my opinion and honestly i can see perfectly fine out the back second row headrests aren't that big either so that's not going to impede your visibility either another thing though rain sensing windshield wipers touching on forward visibility actually comes standard across the board so essentially what that is is whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you so it's just one less thing you got to worry about so you better help keep your eyes on the road not only that i am looking at a head-up display right now giving me my speed speed limit and safety features up on my windshield so again assisting with forward visibility yet again but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Mazda CX-50. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Mazda CX-50. Let me first start with one of the things that you'll probably never guess about the CX-50, which is where it is made. So when you look at the VIN, the first character of that VIN is going to be a 7, which I have personally never seen before on any recent new vehicles. So what that 7 indicates essentially is that the new Mazda CX-50 is built in New Zealand as opposed to Japan, which is where you would think, or at least the USA, because I'm in the USA, so you would think that as well, but never would I have thought that the CX-50 would be built in New Zealand. So little fun fact for you there, that's kind of cool. But anyways, more rugged design again than the CX-5, but it's just slightly larger as well. Let's go ahead and start up front on the CX-50 here. LED headlights with auto leveling, coming standard for every single trim level across the board. That auto leveling feature typically will not come standard on just about every other manufacturer out there. So that is pretty cool. Automatic headlights, of course, coming standard. Automatic high beams as well, meaning when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when the vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams. So that is a convenient feature there. LED daytime running lights, of course, coming standard. But here's another big one adaptive front lighting system coming standard on every single trim level across the board again another feature that you will not find coming standard on most other manufacturers out there even luxury manufacturers essentially what that is is when you're going around a bend at night those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a possum or really anything so that is a pretty cool safety feature and a pretty cool illumination feature at night so i'm a huge fan of that as well you do have front air curtains um to the bottom corners there helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination so overall a very more aggressive look to the front end including those uh more angular headlights and another kind of interesting feature when i got up close here the bottom portion kind of surrounding this front grille these are kind of like rugged kind of grooves in the upper portion of it so i don't know i thought that's an interesting design element i just wanted to point that out i'm not for or against it but overall the front end definitely looks good in my opinion i guess is what i'm getting at so pretty much rounds out the front let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so but now making our way to the side of this one you guys can see those silver roof rails coming standard on the top there but again the roof rack is optional so again i wanted to mention that you're going to get a little bit of wind noise but it is there and it is available. So let's just say that rear privacy glass is going to come on the select trim level and up. 
gloss black power adjustable side mirrors will come standard with LED integrated turn signals also coming standard. That's another thing you typically won't find standard on all trim levels of the competition. Heated side mirrors for the preferred trim level and up. And if you were to go with the premium or premium plus trims, you will get power folding side mirrors then as well. And I like the aluminum trim accents found on the side skirts, although the side skirts and the fender surrounds are in matte black. It kind of works for the CX-50 because it is a more rugged look overall. So then touching on the wheel configurations, they will differ pretty substantially amongst the trim levels so 17 by 7 inch aluminum alloys coming with the base select preferred preferred plus and premium trims 20 by 8 inch aluminum alloys for the premium plus and the turbo trim levels and then for the turbo meridian you're going to get 18 by 8 inch alloys so again they are going to be a wider wheel setup if you go with the premium plus or the turbo trim level so do want to emphasize that let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so but now since we are around to the back of the cx50 there is a very small little shark fin antenna all the way to the top just underneath of that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper led tail lights coming standard across the board in that cool cx50 design so big fan of that you got some uh, silver trim accenting found on the very bottom portion of that rear bumper as well but my very favorite uh mazda does exhaust outlets very well dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips for every single trim level across the board that is pretty cool you're actually going to get larger outlets than for the turbo trim levels as well which is of course what you guys are looking at right now but very well done a lot of suvs are kind of tucking them away and making them hidden which isn't as cool of a look in my personal opinion but nonetheless i do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip Alright, so but now since we are around to the back of the CX-50, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is going to be a power tailgate for the preferred trim level and up. Manual tailgate though for the base and the select trim levels. I should say the S, not the base, but you get what I'm saying. So manual tailgate for those two, but there's a button on the key fob itself on the side of the key. There's a button by the driver's side left knee and the button on the tailgate itself, of course, as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 31.4 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down bumping that up to 56.3 cubic feet then there is some cargo lighting back there but it's not just halogen ball that is an led cargo light so big fan of that there are four grocery bag hooks that's typically more that you see in even suv so i was a fan of that of course there's tie down anchors back there there's a 12 volt power outlet back there there's a little bit of storage on the right side in the back as well then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you're actually going to find a spare tire in case you were curious but then make your way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 39.8 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had sitting back there Dual rear USB charging ports though, coming for the select trim level and up. I love that. Rear ventilation coming standard as well. And there is a rear center armrest with cup holders also coming standard for every single trim level across the board. So, well done, Mazda. You don't always get that for all trims, so. Then make our way up to the front seats. Cloth seating is gonna come with the S. Half leatherette trim seats coming with the select preferred and preferred plus trims. Leather seating for the premium trim level and up. Heated, heated front seats for the preferred trim level and up. And then ventilated front seats for the turbo premium and turbo premium plus trim levels. You get again an eight-way power driver seat with power lumbar for the preferred trim level and up. And then memory settings for the premium trim level and up. So, like I said, so many different trim levels so there are a lot of options that can be had having said that i love everything about the seats especially the power lumbar with the exception of one thing and there is a giant horizontal seam kind of going through the upper portion of my back that makes it not as comfortable for that one particular reason which is why i typically like to emphasize to manufacturers that watch my videos at least vertical seams are always best if you could pull it off like lexus does or like so many manufacturers do because then you don't get those awkward pressure points that we have here unfortunately in the cx50 but like i said other than that the power lumbar was absolutely amazing shouldn't have any issues but i'm just saying this for the passionate pursuit of perfection as lexus puts it anyways then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is going to be leather wrapped for the select trim level and up and then heated for the turbo premium and turbo premium plus so was a big fan of the steering wheel wouldn't have minded if the 10 to 2 grips are a little bit thicker though but still plenty fine then make your way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your mazda logo on the 
the one side, absolutely nothing on the other side because all of your buttons are located on this side of the key, which is pretty cool. Lock, unlock, and of course that button to pop the power tailgate with, in our particular case as well. But it is all keyless entry with the push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my phone in the brake and press that black engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there. And so, once started up, when it comes to the gauges, there is a seven inch digital gauge cluster kind of coming standard here. Cause like I said, it has to be digital because when I changed the drive modes, it did adjust the colors a little bit. So that was pretty cool. Like I said, when you put it in sport driving mode, it's gonna kind of show up in some red hues. And uh, when you put it in off road, it's gonna kind of actually be like a, a brown or a Sahara sand kind of color or desert color. So that's pretty cool too. I like the Mazda did that. Good job, Mazda. But anyways, got your tachometer all the way to your left, uh, engine temp and fuel information all the way to your right. Again, speedometer in front and center. And again, there are buttons on the left side of the steering wheel to control what kind of gauge readout you wanted to put up there. So there's your traditional speedometer, but there is also a digital speedometer you could choose to select up there along with safety features. So a couple different loadouts you could put on the center portion of the gauges, which I think is pretty cool. But then make our way to overall interior quality, a panoramic moonroof coming with the preferred plus trim level and up, dual zone climate control for the select trim level and up, LED interior lighting for the turbo premium and turbo premium plus, auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls for up to three different garage doors I'm seeing here on the premium trim level and up wireless phone charger is going to come on the turbo premium plus trim level so overall when it comes to interior quality honestly mazda crushed it absolutely amazing i like the brown contrast stitching found on the doors as well as just above the passenger side glove box and all that that looks absolutely amazing even the accents on the door grips how they're kind of texturized rather than just leaving a boring matte black so that is good as well i like all the gloss black accents surrounding the shifter you do have a little bit of rubberized storage in front of the cup holders of course cup holders as well then within the center armrest let's see how much storage we got decent amount actually there's a couple usb charging ports actually in there as well and the bottom portion super soft yeah i like that now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here and so for the standard S trim level, you're gonna get an 8.8 .8 inch infotainment screen, but for all other trims, meaning the select trim level and up, you're gonna get a 10 and a quarter inch infotainment screen. Now, one thing I have to say with Mazda is they typically won't do a touch screen, and that is the case as well with this particular setup. So the way you control that infotainment screen is through the circular dial and buttons located directly behind the shifter. And so when you press that, it actually is pretty easy to uh, kind of scroll through here. And I would imagine it would be something that you would get used to pretty easily. And quite honestly, it's a heck of reach anyway so i wouldn't want it to be touch screen so i don't mind the circular dial and buttons actually so bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard android auto as well wireless apple carplay for all trim levels across the board not the wireless android auto just the wireless Apple CarPlay, but you can still, of course, have Android Auto. You just gotta hook it up via USB cable, but factory navigation system coming with the Turbo Premium Plus trim level. Of course, you can check out your radio information up there, and so when it comes to the sound systems, you're gonna get eight speakers for all trim levels, but the Turbo Premium trim levels because those trims are gonna give you a 12 speaker Bose sound system, which actually is the sound system that we have with us here today. So hallelujah. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of our Bose sound system that we have with us here today. This is insane, man. Like the bass is 100% on point. That was ridiculous. Clarity is perfectly fine. I've had Bose sound systems in my cars before. They never failed me, never broken on me, but the bass was insane. Really, that sound system is incredible. The Bose sound system is incredible for the CX-50, without a doubt. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the CX-50 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. But the Turbo Premium Plus is actually going to give you a 360 degree monitor, which is going to give you that bird's eye view, which is always it's going to lead us into safety. And so to start the very most important part, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS that pretty much says it all right there front side side current airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well in the back you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard for all trim levels blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert adaptive cruise control with stop and go smart brake support lane departure warning lane keep assist and driver attention monitoring system as well so Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the CX-50, the steering feel is 100% incredible. Best in class without a doubt. Nothing comes close. Great braking as well. The 60 to zero stopping distance is 100% on point. I absolutely love that, but the steering feel 
is the main star of the show. Great interior quality as well. The contrast stitching is wonderful. The uh, leather wrap steering feel also 100%. As far as room for improvement goes, I'm just gonna be nitpicky, honestly, because uh, quite honestly, I'm a big fan of this thing. So wireless phone charger being only on the very top trim level, that's kind of weird. Most other manufacturers won't do it that way. They'll at least give it on the middle trim levels at minimum. But anyways, also just because this is a driver's car, typically with driver's cars, you find the 10 to two grips on the steering wheel bolstered a little bit thicker. I'll just put it that way. So Mazda, if you're watching this, take a look at BMW's uh, grips and their M Sport vehicles or the M vehicles. I'm not sure how much it would cost to add some thicker bolsters in this thing, but because this is a driver's SUV and the very best driver's SUV in its class, in my personal opinion, I think that would make it even better. The thicker grips just give the driver a better feeling of being in control, in my personal opinion. But anyway, let me know what you guys think of the CX-50 in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. For